And I want to let you know this ent entire week, this theme is all about divine design. That we believe that there's a divine designer that created all of us. And we get to collaborate with one another so that people could see his glory. And I think about the day that we had and the different divine discussions that, and one is getting ready to take place in just a few moments. But each and every discussion, it was, it was just a theme that we collaborate to see great things happen, that we come together, that you bring your gifts and I bring my gifts and we bring our strengths and our weakness and who we are and we get to see a beautiful creation. And that's what this space is all about. It happened through collaboration. It happened. It started with an idea and then it took some people to jump on an idea to say, we're going to get this done together. And I'm really excited about the conversation that we're getting ready to jump into. We've called this creative partnerships that we partner together in creativity. And we wanted to pause and to take some time for this divine discussion to talk to two incredible couples. The first couple is Pastor Rich in DC. They are our lead pastors, the visionaries of Voo Church. And if you didn't know, the reason why we get to be in this space is because they said yes to God. That there's a unique and specific grace and calling on their life to cross culture and art and music and all these different things for the glory of God. And it's beautiful to witness what's happening in this room. And I'm so grateful because we get to, to hear from them tonight. Grateful for their deposit, grateful for the way that they step into spaces that are unknown, spaces that people might be afraid to step into, but we get to be in this space because of them. And then we also have Camilo and Eva Luna, who I personally love a whole lot. Camilo is a four-time Latin Grammy award-winning artist. Let's go, baby! And he's got two Grammy nominations. That's the home team, y'all. I'm just, I'm just excited for my people. Uh, you know the Spotify wrapped thing? You know what Spotify told me today? That one of my top artists is Camilo. I kid you not. And you did like a little video. Where in the spectrum? Number one, <laughs> obviously. Now I think Maverick City and then Camilo was number two. But, but hear this, I don't even speak Spanish, but he's my top artist. I showed up to a Camilo concert and everybody knew clearly that I didn't speak Spanish. But I was singing from the top of my lungs, but the music and everything that pours out of him is absolutely incredible. And his beautiful wife, Eva Luna. The singer, songwriter, actress, fashionista, the list goes on, but just as a couple, they're just so incredible. And we're going to talk to two couples today that work closely together. And what does it look like to have divine partnership? What does it look like to be in relationship and work closely together? And so this is a conversation you want to lean into. We got people watching on the stream. Can we just wave at them real quick? Wave at the stream. We love you. You're not in the room, but we feel you. We're grateful that you're tuning in. Tell somebody about this because this conversation is going to be special. I believe that it's going to inspire you. It's going to help you. That it's going to be something that you're going to walk away with, with so many different takeaways and so many different things. And so, come on, can we make some noise? Can we stand to our feet for Pastor Rich, Pastor Don Shereen, Camilo, and Eva Luna? Amazing. Hey, can we put our hands together for Doe? Because uh, I just... <laughs> Doe got off the stage. I said, you were singing to me, right? I was like, we had a connection up there. But uh, I think we all felt that way. And we're just so honored that you're here in the room with us. And thanks for being a part. And of course, guys, thank you for being here. Grab a seat. We're going to uh, enjoy ourselves tonight. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so honored. We got people all over the place. And of course, I just was getting text messages from friends that aren't able to get into the room tonight, watching on the stream. We've actually been streaming from this space. Uh, I think wherever Oliver is, two weeks ago, we started with a 360 degree YouTube, like continuous stream. Everything about this space that you're into today, 
um, is this theme, divine design. And you'll see all over the place that, you know, we're all under construction. Notice the space is unfinished. And truth be told, that's kind of your life. Uh, we're all unfinished. Praise God, right? Like, aren't you thankful? Like, you're not all the way there yet. Um, maybe I'm the only honest person, but I'm, I'm glad I got some growing to do. Um, and uh, the whole idea and concept if you've missed the, the earlier conversations, actually came from Virgil Abloh, who wrote me a text back in July, a good friend of mine uh, who passed away this, uh, this past Sunday. And he wrote me saying, I want to do uh, a space that we talk about faith and creativity. And um, of course, we had no idea that uh, before we got here that he wouldn't be here on this earth. But all day long, and really starting last night, we had a kickoff dinner. We've just like sensed like divine design the idea of these ladders, every part of this space has to do with heaven and earth touching. And tonight, uh, I believe Virgil is in heaven looking down upon this moment. And although we didn't anticipate this looking this way, I think that God has been working and God's going to use it for God's glory, but also to bless so many other people. And so every one of our conversations are in tribute to Virgil. And if you're here tonight and you're seeing this big sign that says, thank you, Virgil, it's because uh, this wouldn't have happened without him. And um, we're really grateful. And so tonight, as Manu was saying, we brought one of our favorite couples, uh, a couple that we've known for a long time. I actually had the honor and privilege of doing these guys' wedding. Yes. So we love these guys very, very much. But we just wanted to, from the very get-go, it was like Virgil's idea that we would just have discussions and conversation, which I love. I do a lot of preaching, but I've just learned that like life change actually happens in conversation. Yes. And so it's not necessarily an interview tonight. It's much more of a process out loud. And we're not going to go super long, but we're going to talk for about 45 minutes or so. And we're going to kind of put them in the hot seat, but DC and I are going to kind of interject ourselves into the story as well. But um, we love this couple. How many in the room? You love Camilo and Abel. <laughs> Any Camilo and Ava Luna fans in the room that I make a little bit of noise? All right. We're just, we're just so proud of who you guys are and the way that you, I want to think about divine design. I think about you guys, but I thought we'd just like start today a little bit from the beginning because Manu talked so eloquently this morning about collaboration. That's our heart. Like yeah. everything you see is not one person, a person. It's teams of people in the shadows. And Vu Church started with a Bible verse. The Bible verse was pity the man who falls, who has no one to help him up. Wow. And what people miss out on in life is that the scripture says one can put a thousand to flight. Watch this. Two can put 10,000 to flight. Yeah. So the math of collaboration is not addition. Yeah. It's multiplication. Yeah. So if you want some stuff to multiply in your life, you're going to have to add some people to the story. Yes. And I think the day that you two met, God started multiplying <laughs> your story a little bit. Can you maybe just tell us, because Dee and I were talking about on the way over here, like just maybe a little bit how you guys met and like the, the starting grounds of Kami and Eva. Well, first of that all, that was my hello. Spanish accent, by the way. Got me. Got me. That was great. Like, notice, like, I had this one time, this friend, we were praying. He's like, hey, Pastor Rich, he was driving to the airport. I got to tell this story. He's driving to the airport. <laughs> I know, I know, but people love it. They'll, they'll understand. They love me. It's okay. Like, that was, no, no, no I don't. I, I'm here for Kami. Okay, anyways, um, he was driving to the airport and he was like, hey, he's talking to me, totally normal English. And he's like, hey, man, I was headed to Guatemala to, to preach. He, before I got out of the car, he goes, <clears throat> can I pray for you? I said, absolutely, you can pray for me. He's like, dear God, we thank you for Pastor Rich and his wonderful ministry. God, we thank you, Lord, that you're using him, going around the world, preaching the gospel. God, we just pray that as he goes to Guatemala. <laughs> like, it, like, like all of a sudden the accent kicked in. And like, so I don't know when to do that sometimes, but that was my attempt right there. Like, hey guys, what's going on? Got me, let's talk, you know? So <laughs> is that okay to do? Am I, yeah, yeah, so. Gami. It's natural. That sounds natural for me. Yeah, me too. Sorry. And the hand, Gracias. the hand gestures. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bro, it's like that from the stream. It's it's super funny uh, for me to be here because the first time I went to Vu, I didn't know how to speak English, right? At all. Like at the beginning, I was like, "What do you say? What do you say?" All the time. Means so so yeah yeah. So I had like a friend of mine who was like super annoying. I was like. Él está diciendo, and I was like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure, and he would time. speak like with this deep tone that was yeah, extremely so loud. And loud. And I would get so nervous. I'd be like, Pastor Rich can hear you guys because. No, but it's so beautiful <laughs> that you guys invited us. It means a lot. Um, <laughs> mi amor, you, you, you tell the story. I don't. He fell in love with wanna, me. I don't want to say anything. <laughs> yeah. As soon That's as it? he saw me. No, we, um, we were actually. Um, now I'm going to have to, I want to switch to Spanglish with a Kami. Kami. Um, and the M is really important for you to use too. Instead of um, 
M. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we met in Colombia. Uh, we had a. <laughs> That's the other thing I love. <laughs> like so like when I say Tacoma. Nope. <laughs> no one's ever cheered in my entire life, you know? Where's Tacoma at? Like, what? You know, so, so. I love it. We were hired to uh, present an event together. And it was like this fashion show for little kids. Um, I think it was like, it was a shampoo. A baby shampoo. It was a baby. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Baby. Baby. Babe. It was a baby shampoo <laughs> release. Baby shampoo. Yeah, a brand hired us to present like the release of this baby shampoo, right? And, and I'm pretty sure it was like, I don't know if it was around Halloween or something like that, but we had to get like face painted. Yeah. And he had like a Batman mask. <laughs> he was like Batman. And I had some like, a, like I don't know if it was like a butterfly or something. But yeah. we met. And at that time, I had a boyfriend. He had a girlfriend. We Nothing happened. It was not, we did not, okay, there was like, no nice connection you, nice there. You, this is my single. I was like, this is my single. Mm -hmm. He gave me his autographed single. Autographed. <laughs> nice. Nice touch. <laughs> Super lame. I did that. But it I worked. That was lame. Because a year later. He wasn't that lame. He wasn't that lame. <laughs> A year later, I f found the single. It was it was in my room the whole time. I had seen it, you know, every single day. No, it was there. And I was cleaning out my room, and I saw it, and I'm like, what's up with this guy? <laughs> Where is he at right now? And I didn't have a boyfriend anymore. And I was hoping he didn't have a girlfriend. Um, <laughs> and so I slid into his DMs, basically. It was me. Thank you. Women 2021. That was, that was, uh, I was, that was seven years ago. Um, and I told him like, hey, More. so I found your single. <laughs> Just listened to it a year later. <laughs> so good. Hope you're doing great. And he was like, yo, what's up? <laughs> so basically. And you were like, I don't really talk about like here through DM. Oh, so. I, don't, I don't talk through Twitter. Yeah, yeah, Twitter yeah. DM. Twitter DM and she was, it was like, Twitter. what's your time. number? She asked me for my number. Yep. 2021. I was desperate. And I was no. like, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. And Never. we started talking like every day and like six months after you traveled with your dad to Bogota. Yep. In that moment, we're like super connected and... and we sealed the deal. Yep. So beautiful. He, I were, yeah. And then that's and, seven yeah, years like, later, we're here, married yeah. and with a baby on the way. <laughs> it's the best ever. And you're both two of the most creative people I've ever been around. And I think watching you, because really we became dear friends as we were planting VU Church and you were both a part of VU Church. And then to see what God's done in both of your mm. lives over the last few years, it's incredible. And you both live with such generous hearts. I think about the way that, uh, how many collaborations both of you have been a part of, how you love working mm -hmm. with other people. Even with Vu Church, you know, our very first EP, we were able to make it because your family opened up the doors to your studio, allowed us completely free to record all of our EP. Isn't that incredible? It's so special. Like, their generosity really paved the way for the music that we're creating today. I remember being in the studio, and Camilo, you were there, and Wyatt was like four months old, and I you got in his moment. face, and it was the first time I'd ever heard him have a belly laugh. I'd never heard him laugh before, and it was like this moment in the studio while we were because making the, the EP. Because of the <laughs> oh, he was like, <laughs> he, yes. like what's wrong? I don't know what it, it was, was beautiful. but it was it was such a joyful experience. And you guys just <laughs> walk with generosity. You have incredible families, but you walk with open arms, welcoming everybody into the family. So I'm wondering, just from the get, like, what was the first thing that you collaborated on musically? What What was that like? Was it Was mm. it easy to collaborate? Was it difficult because you had a relationship? What What was that like? And what was the first time, Yama? The first time. <laughs> wow. No, because I don't remember if that was you directing one of my music videos. Or was it before or after you guys had your first kiss? After. Okay. First yeah. kiss was, was 
that time in in Bogota. Oh wow! Quick, not, that, not, that, not the not the not the year not the <clears throat> not with the face paint. That the one after. exactly. The day after. Um, not the day after the no. year after. <laughs> <laughs> There's a part of the story we're not talking. No. Um, when was the first? I, I feel mean, like I don't remember. I feel like it was writing. Writing together, yes, and maybe and for me. I think so. So so um, I remember when we crossed that line from from just like being boyfriend and girlfriend and then starting in the creative process together because when I'm 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 writing and when I'm creating, like I'm in another mode, you know? Like sometimes, you know, like creativity is not always like a garden of flowers, you know, like the creativity is like a path that you have to walk with with like with a uh, with interesa, you know, like with with yeah. yeah, like there's 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 a lot of challenges. Yes. Sometimes um, creativity is painful, you know, like beautifully painful, you know, like 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 giving birth, for example, you know. No, I mean it's 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 like the the main and biggest creative moment in your life, you know, like having like yeah. So so <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Like you're creating a life through love, you know, that's a creative in the biggest and it's beautiful, but it's painful. It's like a lot of challenge or whatever. So the creative process for me, it's been always like full of beautiful tension. And I, I didn't share that with her before we started creating together. And that tension was something that made our relationship super stronger, right, mi amor? Yes, but... <laughs> so like that. <laughs> but it was it was really hard to <laughs> to live that and to see that side of him. It was super one because I wanted to like help him. He was going through so much like stress and pain and and I honestly was never so like connected with the songwriting part of me more than, you know, I I think I learned that more with Kami. And see there when I switched the accent And um, I think that when that first moment happened, I was still like way too shy with my gift, I guess. And I, I didn't want to like share it completely because I was yeah. too afraid. Also, I have an amazing songwriter uh, dad. All of my brothers are incredible songwriters. And my husband is an incredible songwriter. So I was like, well, I'm just going to sit back here. And not be a part of that. But when we started writing together, he made me feel he made me feel super comfortable. But in the beginning, I, I think it was a little frustrating for him um, because I wasn't so like in it. And for him, that creative process was being like, you know, and for me, it was <laughs> let me think about the melody first. And then I'll say it when I'm sure of what I am thinking, you know, and for well, him, it's I like I, you wanted me to be more out no. there. Yes, but that's beautiful because you know what? Like something that I've really learned from you is like your connection with the uh, intuition, which is non, uh, like not a, a like a process, you know? Like, I mean, when, so when you think that's why this is so beautiful for me, there's divinity in your creativity. Like that when you just focus on the the effort part of the creation it's hurtful a lot but when you connect with the source it's like you know what i mean and and you were super connected with that and i wasn't at the beginning you know like i thought that was supposed to be all about me like like help me to to take this that is inside of me out but you knew like because You're awesome. You knew, <laughs> you knew that the real and the biggest creativity doesn't come from you 100%. You know, like you participate in it, but you know, so that was the first choke, you know? It's beautiful. Oh, give him a hand. This It's is incredible. So well said. Yo, wait, I'm, I'm proud of my English. Your wow. English is so well I said a couple of words. Yeah. That was, Sara? Your English is wow. beautiful. Right? Um, I, I love. I think it's <laughs> your English is. Is it bonita? I don't know. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'm gonna have it. I'm gonna get it. Don't worry. Um, 
we, we, we've been to a lot of interesting discussions. And in fact, we did a great discussion today on, on writing and it really went into the lane of songwriting and starting with a blank page. And I love what you're saying because for me, creativity is always a grind. There's always like this effort and it's always like the ground that you're tilling and plowing. It's not full of flowers. I mean, that's beautiful imagery, but around this idea of collaboration, which I think is fascinating. And even when we start to kind of attach these ideas to scripture, scripture says, um, iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. And that scripture is like great to put like, I don't know, in, in the locker room or at the house or like a brotherhood or, but when you think about its true context, there's friction it's sharpening edges are coming off. How do you get to the point? Yeah. Like there has to be this like grit that takes place. And even as you guys are talking right now, you know, DC and I have led, we've been together since we were 17. Um, it's a whole nother love story. Same thing. I mean, she was really into me and um, <laughs> that's not true, but um, anyways, it worked. And so we made it. Uh, You're single, your <laughs> autograph single. <laughs> totally. But like, we've just done all of our life together. So we went to school together. We got the same major. We've always been in ministry. Like everything we've just done, it's just been together. In many ways, it looks like you guys have your own individual things that you're doing, but you're working together yeah. in harmony. And I think the collaboration is really beautiful. And tonight we are kind of leaning into this idea of like a romantic relationship or a marriage, but it's broader than that for everybody here in the room. Yeah. It's like, we need people. And I think the area that you guys are speaking about that I want to maybe just try to go a little bit deeper with and you're both already doing it, which is just this idea of like, it takes strength to be vulnerable. Mm. My favorite analogy of vulnerability is like, to be vulnerable is like to put a weapon in your hand. If I'm gonna be vulnerable with Kami or Ava, it's like I'm putting a weapon in your hand, hoping that you won't use it against me. Wow. And that's, that's the scary part. It's like, all right, and I think I'm kind of hearing that like, he gets going and he's mad scientist, like we're gonna knock these songs out. And you're kind of like, Hey, like, let's, let's go. Look. And that's probably how maybe DC and I, just our personalities play into it. I know for us, it's been a journey and we're still in the journey of being vulnerable and being honest and wow. showing truth. Maybe just weigh into that a little bit. Cause I think it's going to help maybe relationships like in the marriage sense or dating sense, but bigger than that, I think it's going to help teams a little bit. How have you guys built the trust or how have you come to terms with being more vulnerable? Wow. That is so beautiful. Well, well. Like, I mean, um, vulnerability, I think it's like the, the, like, like I was thinking about the creative process at the beginning with us and something that was very hard at the beginning. Now she's getting better. No, because like she wants to work on it. Uh, uh, and you've told me before. Like, I gave this is a very her. good husband, by the way. I want all the men pay attention. This is Three like, time. he's like, hey, you said I could say this. Yeah, he's and, looking, uh, he's looking uh, over. This was yes. your testimony. Like at the beginning, you were super afraid to show your vulnerability in the creative process, you know? Like, I mean, you wanted to be 100% sure about what you were going to propose in the creative uh, moment in order for you to say it. And the truth is, you're never 100% sure about anything in the creative process, you know? And the best ideas are like the ones that you're less in control of, you know, because it, they they don't come from you. Yeah. And that happens to us all the time when we're writing. And it happens the same when we are like in a discussion or like in a moment of tension or like in a, in a moment of diferencia, but like... Um, yeah. You got it, you got yeah. It. Yeah. So, so um, when you have like um like a moment of tension, the best key to unlock whatever is like holding the tension between the moment is vulnerability. Yeah. yeah you know what? Like I'm afraid of saying this, but you know what? I feel Fair. this way. You know, and that's gonna unlock everything. And it works the same with the creative process. You know, like I really cannot. Remember how many times I've been in a songwriting session and, and like the best ideas always come from someone saying like, yo, maybe this is going to sound like super stupid, you know? Like, I mean, this is going to be like super lame. Like, like this is like, ignore it, you know? Like, oof. I'm just going to say it, okay? But like, don't 100% least, like, I mean, blah, it's like, blah, 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 blah. Like, I'm just going to say, yeah, like, blah, 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 blah. And you say it and everybody's like, that's it. And you felt that way because it w you weren't in control of that idea, you know? So good. So good. Right? It's so good. 
that when it comes to what you create together, I think it's really beautiful. And I know behind the scenes, you have to fight to stay on the same page. You have to yeah. fight to keep your heart united because you really can't create the kind of beauty that you're both bringing to the world with divided hearts. Yeah. And I know that you guys have been on a journey since you got married. I mean, both of you have had so much exposure and then your travel schedule is taxing. And now you're carrying a baby and you're celebrating that, but also it adds a completely different dynamic yeah. to the trajectory of your life. Uh, have you found like in marriage, what's the quickest way for you to get from a disagreement or division to getting back on the same page? I think there are people in here in relationships. I think that the longer time goes, the further the divide gets in our hearts. Like uh, yeah. w- what is that journey of learning how to, hey, let's cut this out and let's get on the same page yeah. been like? I feel like this year has been like speaking also about vulnerability. Um, we we got married February 2020. Yeah. And um, quarantine for us was really good because we were with my family. Um, it was, it was kind of weird because we had just gotten married and, you know, then living with the parents, but it was awesome. Still, it was really fun. And with my brothers and, um, and then right after quarantine, um, I went to Colombia to start filming a TV show and it was like a whole different, uh, movement for our relationship. And then now, we are just starting to live in our home and like yep. we've had, yeah, we've had like 15 nights in total in our home. So it's like the first time we're actually living together, like for real, for real on our own. And so it's completely different. Different, yes. And I've loved it because I've felt, and especially in this year that we've grown so much with our vulnerability. Like I feel like now it's, you know, we yeah. know everything yeah. about each other, basically. And what you were saying before, like hoping, like, you know, the worst of me, hoping that you won't use that yeah, against wow. me. And um, I, what was your question? <laughs> I totally, because I was going to give another idea. The time. I was going to say another idea that I really, I was just saying, like, how do, you, how do you keep your hearts united when, when oh, you're okay. going through so much? How do you stay on the same page when disagreements happen? You have to get up on the stage and sing together. You can't be angry. You've got to be yeah. like, how do you fight for that? I know what we're talking about. I think it's super important. Okay. About the, no, because we were talking about today about you guys, how... Después habla de lo fácil que perdono yo. Dale, dale. What? Was that positive? <laughs> Was that encouraging? I don't know, Rich. I don't know. <laughs> no, you were talking about how how everybody like in our path and in our journey that has been so unique and different how everybody had tried to give counsel to uh-huh. us we'll and we discovered that that like like all those counsels came from love 100% but our relationship is so unique and so like different you know and i mean we've been for two years together and we've lived like only for two weeks in the same house with no interruptions, like quality time. So it's like super different. So, so when we tried to apply every counsel that we were having from outside, it was like a little weird, you know? But when it was only when we started to have time to listen to the counsel that comes from inside out, like from our own like from the spirit, you know, like, I mean, it doesn't come from us, but like we, we have inside of us that first hand counsel that it's all, it's only going to apply to us, that it's only going to work for us in our specific moment and language and everything. So I would say that maybe like being and working on being more experts on listening to that little quiet voice was like a very important part of our and we have, we have what, what I was going to say before, and thank, thank you because you helped me remember, <laughs> um, is that there's, <laughs> the, it's a real thing, the whole, the pregnancy. Right. Um, it's that we have like a lot of practical things for in our, in our relationship. I feel like that's something that helps. So we have like non-negotiables right. and like practical 
um, exercises, even if we don't want them, if even if we don't want to do them. So it was it Sean Wolfington. I think so. Yeah. So there's there's this one thing that Sean Wolfington. Yes. Do you guys do it or do you hate it? We don't, but I love it. Okay. Make I love the story. Thing. It's so you good. You need to share it. It's awesome. It's amazing. So I don't know if it was a conversation that you had with him. Yeah. And he explained something that he would do with his wife that if they were in a in the middle of a discussion and they knew that the discussion wasn't really going to go anywhere because it's one like of those, those like, discussions. That it's are one like, of those. It's not, not like gonna go anywhere. one of the important ones that you actually have to like yeah. get through. <laughs> but one of the ones that are like... <laughs> We know that we're just doing, like, we're, we're just in this discussion because one of us wants to win. Yes. And, you know, you just touch the other person's nose. <laughs> this is great. And you, you have, have to take be, this home. And then the other person. Yeah, you have to do the other hand. The other person has to, to touch it. it back. No, and that's, no, and let's talk about vulnerability there. Yes. Because if you're in the middle of a discussion, like those discussions, like a fight. Yeah, I mean, a fight that you know it's not like a, like a purposeful fight? No, it's like a, like one of those. Yeah. Petty. Like for you to be able to drop your your weapons and be like, boop, yeah. it's like, you know, it's like. It's, and if you put the, you put the sound to it too. <laughs> it's lame. It's like annoying. It's weird. You feel super uncomfortable. But I promise to you, the next thing in the discussion is going to be both laughing and like dropping. Like, why are we having this discussion, you know? That has helped us a lot. I love it. And and. and I recommend it. Some people are like, no, that would never work. I'd get so mad. I'd like slap the hand. <laughs> But it's really worked for us because it's just... <laughs> right. It's, it's amazing. What would you do if I did that to you, Kami? That, I would love it. He would crack I, up. I would love it. <laughs> I would totally love it. He'd do that. Let's fucking do it. Yo, wait. It's amazing, How though. How hard it really is works. to do that in the middle of a fight? Right. Oh, my God. So, it's so like, hard. It disarms Yeah, it's you. like, yeah. I... And like, it's, me rindo. It's like, and yeah, it's one I person, gave up. And once you start doing it, you have that, like... You're in the discussion, and you know that at some point, one of you is going to do it, so you kind of want to be the first one to do it. But <laughs> at the same time, you don't want to do it yet. It's amazing. It's so great. So good. So, that. I feel like those practical things, yeah. and also for us, it's like a non-negotiable that if we're in a discussion or in, or in a fight or whatever, or we're kind of like, Meh, with the other, we cannot go to sleep like that. Like, Never. we, we cannot. Huge. So we always, like, even if we're like, if it's right before bed and we're like, you know what, whatever. And you like turn around <laughs> and you don't want to see them. Yeah. I turn back and it's like, okay, well, we got to talk this out because we're not going to go to sleep like this. So it's just certain things Absolutely. I feel like you have to apply. Yeah. And not just in your, um, really like, relationship with your husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend um but with your with your family with your friends i think all those things are super super important and they'll yeah. help That's it's amazing. not it's not like horrible or lame to be practical with no with yeah, those no, things, no no you know? it's absolutely beautiful and i think a big part of like where this conversation is is going that i think is something that we need to like lean into is we're talking about building trust Yeah. And I think once again, as creatives, I know some of this stuff we're kind of saying a lot in our discussions, but it's just true. It has to keep being hammered. Like we don't want to trust. We're, we're, we're insecure. We carry our ideas really yes. close. And so it's scary. And in a relationship, we have to build trust. But what happens is we all have an ego. Yeah. We all have pride. That's why I want to, you know, if we're even going to do the nose thing, I'm going to be the first one to do the nose thing. You know, like <laughs> it's, it's these stems inside of us to be that are coming from our fallen state, that we are full of pride. That was the great sin is what C.S. Lewis said. It was pride. It comes before the fall every time. Yeah. I think one of the things that's interesting that we could talk about that we'd love to get some of your insight because there's a lot of people in this room and so many people watching online and others that are going to watch this later on and they look at you guys as a couple and when they see you from afar, your music and both of you, by the way, I think you guys make such art in a world where there's such, try to hear me the right way, there's so many like, just low-hanging fruit kind of art. You know, let's just make a raunchy video. I, I'll, I'll spare all the details, but you guys have brought light yes. into what I think is a dark space. You, you guys have really tried to bring positivity, faith, divine design into a space that most of the time glorifies the low-hanging fruit. It's something that I've respected about you guys and appreciate about you guys. You operate from value and conviction. But there's so many people in this room and watching online and, and us that look at you guys and see the momentum on your life, the breath of God in your life. Momentum, by the way, is always that liar 
Yeah. And some of you in this room right now, you don't have any momentum, you, or at least you feel that way, and you're going, I'm never going to have it. Lie. Yes. Lie number two, some of you have momentum. Life is going good. And you go, I'm always, always going to have momentum. <laughs> They're both a lie. Yeah. It's not true. There's ebbs and flows. There's peaks and troughs, and there's mountains and valleys. Wow. You guys, to so many people, are like the picture of success. You guys are the picture of, wow, you just got four Grammys. By the way, not just four Grammys, most nominated for Grammys. Most Grammys, he won there. I, and by the way, when, it, when, it, when any of my friends do something good, I'm texting, I'm like, we made it. It's like, I did nothing for those Grammys, but I'm like, they're mine, bro. Like, no. There you are. Like, put one of my, like, but um, like, it's so many, success, success. Like, that's what people think. But I, I've learned in my life that the success of my life, it's, it, I think it's Bill Gates who says it's a lousy teacher. Yeah. Like, I think if anything, if we're not careful, success just makes us more full of pride. Yeah. And I'm thinking about my friend Virgil. I'm getting ready to, to share at his homegoing celebration. And the thing that I think about his life is that to the world, this guy is so successful and no doubt he is. I mean, I just went to the Louis Vuitton show the other night and everybody you can think of is at the show and he's the picture of success. But the reason why everyone is so drawn to him is not because of his success. It's not because he's gone to live a successful life. It's because he lives a significant life. Wow. And this is important that like we as artists, every one of us, we can understand that we too can tap into significance. I'm wondering from a vulnerable state, which I'm putting you on a yellow stage in front of hundreds of people. Can you maybe just for a moment, like, because people are watching again, it's like, oh, you're, you're successful. What has been the challenge of mm. success? What wow. has been the temptation of yeah. success? How is that? What's been the struggle of success? Yeah. Um, like I was really in love with that phrase that is there, like, please excuse the mess under construction, no? And I really connected with it, you know, because um, you once preached, DC, about an idea that you had of, of, of um, living the dream doesn't look like dreaming the dream, yeah. right? It's very different. And that's something that we remember, like, almost before every show that we do, right, mi amor? We, we talk about that. And like, after. And after. <laughs> like, yo, wait, 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 wait. If you don't stop, you're not going to understand that you are right now living your dream. But it doesn't look 100% as how it was dreamt in your mind and in your heart before, you, you know? The messy parts are not part of the dream in the dream. The 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 clo the the closed doors are not part of it, you know. Um, the people that is gonna say bad stuff about your creativity, you never. Yeah, I dreamt that, you know. And so when you're living something awesome, but you have like a little bit of that too, you're like, no, 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 no. And always it's like ahead, ahead, like there I'm going, I'm going there, 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 there. and you have to stop and like focus on what you have right now right here and maybe you're living your dream right now you don't understand and there's a, a, a verse from the bible that is like like something that i've been obsessed about it's one eh, when when eh, mi amor ayúdame lo de no lo de lo de cuando when jesus said eh, and bigger things you're gonna do like greater things what do you mean greater things i mean greater like what do you mean greater like, unless you take that seriously in your creative process and in your journey as an artist, unless you really, like, like I mean, we're doing, like, really cool stuff. No, but wait, greater than that that was written that I was like, wait, wait, what, what, what? So I don't want to be the one that is going to be confusing myself and, like, lying to myself, just telling the world I'm awesome I'm so awesome. Look at this amount of whatever that I'm getting. Blah, 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 blah. The Grammys, wow. The sold outs, whatever. Like, I don't know if that's what that verse is about, you know? And I want to be 100% connected with that, you know? So that's my, um, my motivation and my, my, my engine, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. No. It's beautiful. I'm going to weigh in. Yeah. I I was thinking while you were talking too that it depends what who defines 
success in your life. Yeah. So for everyone, what they see, I, I feel like I'm a very successful person. Yes, but I, for me, success is, you know, like having a husband that loves me deeply, having a, an incredible uh, um, a live relationship with God, having a community that's incredible. And that just, I feel like I'm the most successful. But people don't necessarily see it that way. I think the most important thing is remembering like your success, like yes. what, what, how you define yeah. that success. Yeah. Because if you get confused, you get wrapped in this ongoing cycle that never ends. And it's really, really complicated because that's all you search for more than like the excellence in your creativity, more than um, what your heart's telling you. It's like when Kami started writing, it, it was more about, um, okay, so what's sounding right now? On, on the radio. So this is what's happening. I kind of, I got to sound like this. I got to change my lyrics to this. Yeah. And he thankfully never let that, he will never say it, but he never let that influence him. And I think he was always focused on what his success was, which was sharing what he really wanted to share yeah. with people and his truth and, and sharing light and I think that's also extremely important apart from, you know, being connected with that and not letting it yeah. come out blind you. Yeah. I think, mm -hmm. you know, changing the definition of success in your mind is, is yeah. super, super important. Wow. And you can tell what you value from the music you create. It's so clear and it's so counterculture. And I think that's why it's resounded with the entire world. I mean, in yeah. a matter of just a very short time, you're filling up stadiums around the world on a world tour and people are filled with so much joy wow. as they celebrate that's the music so that's been birthed through your love and through your individual lives. It's very different from the viewpoint of a lot of creatives that they have to be in a very dark, lonely, yeah. bitter, jaded place to yeah. create beauty. But you create beauty from joy and life and security yeah. and a deep well of love, a commitment to go to bed without holding grudges against each other so that you can get up on the stage and just let love flow out oh, into so the good. stadiums. It's so different from what people tell you you have to experience yes. in order to create. Yeah. Um, and you fight for it and you've stayed true to yourself. Like if somebody comes over to my house, they're going to hear about the two of you because wow. I'm going to put on your music videos. Dominique knows. Aiden's here. He knows. Because I so believe in it. And I think that what you're creating the world needs. Wow. Celebration of marriage and being loyal to one another, walking with integrity, um, being loyal to family, having a generational heritage of creativity and uniqueness and legacy. Wow. That's what you're doing. And I want to, if you don't realize it, that's what you're doing. You're creating a different path for people. And we're behind you every step of the way. But how have you stayed true with everybody in the, in the meeting saying, wow. you need to create like this. You need to make this yeah. sound. And you're like, no, this is who I am. How have wow. you fought for that? That is so hard because, and, 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 um, in like ideas first look very, much like a seed and not like a tree, right? Like the first idea that you propose, like in a world of a lot of trees that are like giving a lot of fruit and whatever, you say like, yeah, but look at this. And you show like your little seed and there's like very few people that can see the baobab, the giant tree yes. behind that little seed, you know? And the other thing is that creativity and ideas and everything from inside and in the process doesn't look that's beautiful, you know, yeah. like it's under construction, right? So, yeah. so, so, um, I've been able to trust the process and to trust the, the, um, like how ugly can be the step by step until it is the, uh, like done, you know, you abandon your art because you never finish your art. You just decide one, two, lovely, abandon it, right? So, so, uh, so I've been able to trust my process and there's a lot of people that is like, no, but it doesn't look like, and I have to shut my ears. Like you don't understand because I'm in the middle of it. So you're seeing my house under construction and it's ugly. Please don't like, I mean, like, I mean, and another decision that I've been taking a lot and it's not isolation. It's only from people that you are not in a vulnerable relation, like open relationship like don't open the doors of your remodeling house to people that is not gonna understand it, you know? 
That'll preach. I mean, and we are living that in our spiritual creative journey, but in our material journey too. We are remodeling our house. And it's, it's exactly that. When you, you, you see the final picture in your mind or like some kind of it, you know? It's, I, I just remembered because today my cousin went to go see it for the first time after he saw the original version of the house. And um, we had always spoken to like everyone we know that when we have our house ready, we want everybody to take off their shoes when they come in. We just want that to be a thing. Like we want everybody to be barefoot at our house. So be prepared. Um, and so my cousins come in today and they're like, should we take off our shoes? And I'm like, not yet. Your, your feet are going to look like this. Because they were like... Messy black it's so messy there's dust everywhere still like we wake up like not being able to breathe <laughs> because but, but because when it's we under wake construction up, we I, like when i wake up i see the final picture to be honest i see the house empty and i'm like it's not empty here it's not empty here i know where is headed you know i know it right it's pretty amazing um this whole installation has been called divine design and maybe if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to maybe start, uh, maybe Ava could start and then maybe Camilo could um, follow up. Just your faith journey, just a little bit, like how your faith inspires your art. I think when we first talked to Virgil, this was going to be a cool space for him to kind of talk about his faith and how he feels like divinity is in creativity. Um, I know for you, Ava, you grew up in a house like that where that was taught to you and as part of your journey, but uh, Kami's been on maybe a little bit of a different journey in his story. I just think it's kind of a cool space. We're here. Um, that's the purpose of this place that like, man, God's breathing. And I think that source that you were talking about, maybe just share a little bit, or just talk about that, the importance of, of faith and what you do. Yeah. I um, did grow up in church pretty much. My, my mom had this beautiful encounter with Jesus uh, before all of us did. And then you know, slowly she would just like talk about him and we started falling in love and we'd go to church with her and and I always thought it was really, really cool. So um, I once decided to follow Jesus and it was wonderful and I felt super cool and I was like, I'm going to now stand in the front and lift my hands and I'm going to be, you know, super pro. And I'd carry my Bible and it'd be like extra highlighted and with all the post-its coming out, just I'd just put them anywhere to look super, super Christian. Um, <laughs> and and I loved it. And then I became also like um, like a like a it wasn't a youth teacher, but for like a Sunday school, but with like little kids. And I'd be so mean to them. I'd I'd be so mean because I thought that I had authority. It was horrible. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't know where guys. this is so, going, but... No, I'm gonna, trying to we're say... We're under construction. It's I'm fine. trying to <laughs> That since it started, it, it started this way. And yeah, I grew up in a, you know, in a believing home. It wasn't always like the best relationship with God. And um, when I started growing up, I saw how involved my brothers were with with church and how they, like, they were really connected. And I was like... How, how can I look like them a little bit more? Um, and I just started getting into it and reading the Bible more and praying more. And all of a sudden I was like, God, I kind of want, I want like easier communication with you. And I don't know how to do it. I felt super awkward all the time. And, huh? Vulnerability. Right. And, and it just happened one day where I felt like it was like, it unlocked and I had been following Jesus for like seven years and seven years later, finally unlocked. Um, and then what's crazy is that I think of myself in that moment and my relationship with God in that moment for me was at its best. But now it's so different. And since I met Kami, his journey, like my, I felt like my duty was to present God to him. <laughs> in some way <laughs> and I didn't know how to because he was like like a he was very you know open with his like his mustache with his, no he was oh. very uh -huh. oh. he would he would he was very open to like receiving but I had to I wanted to be able to present God to him in like a way that he would absolutely fall in love with him like maybe too open that maybe like you have no like no no you were like always super like 
logical. Like I feel like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. you would always want to understand God and I'd be like, yeah, you can't understand him. <laughs> it's really hard. Um, it's really hard. <laughs> it's really hard. I don't think you're ever going to get it. <laughs> if that's what you're looking for. No, but it. what I'm trying to say is that in that moment when I was like kind of just waiting to see what would happen with him because I also didn't want to like just force his really thank you guys whoever it was force his uh, relationship with God I was kind of waiting and and him asking the questions like but does it say this this and this in the Bible it would make me like search and start investigating and learn more and more and more and in that moment when he would ask me the questions I felt like I was extra connected with God because yeah I had to give him the right answers, you know? And so I grew so much just from his journey. Yeah. So like now my relationship with God is at a point where I absolutely love it. And it's totally different than, you know, yeah. that point seven years ago. Yeah, that is so beautiful. Yeah, But it's yeah. awesome. And now we get to share our day-to-day -day no, and, relationship. And, and for me, it was exactly the same. Like for me, understanding your effortless surrender to the source without any you know like any yeah 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 i mean like my my like my my search for for the divinity was like that and she was like you know and like looking at her was like so you know and you were like a, 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 a how do you say that like a shortcut for me to Oh, like to release, you know, but I was gonna say that that um, <laughs> right now uh, I was gonna say that that um, like for 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 me there's there's no way for me to get closer to God than when I'm um, in my creative process, you know. Like I mean, there's no way for me to talk about creativity or like design or like creation and being part of the ongoing creation of the universe and not talking about the source, you know, the absolute, the divinity, the source from all that it's, that it's coming from outside. Like, I mean, like the creatives here understand that when you're doing something like that, you just like receive, like that's the word, no? Like yes. you just re receive it. So there's no way to talk about creativity than, than like, talking about the the open availability you know like for me my creative process it's been all about exercising the the um, like that position of my heart or of like silent and disponibilidad abierta you know like an open like open my heart and just like like everything like use me you know like like whatever it's there floating from the source god Use me. I'm here. I'm I'm available. You know, and this is my this is my my instrument. This is my instrument. Whatever you have, but like just doing that. And and for me, understanding that stopped um, making the divorce between my creativity and the purpose of my life. And understanding that we're connected, we're like, bling, you know. <laughs> It's beautiful. Can you put your hands, guys? Really, really wonderful. These guys, um, it's easy to talk to them all night because uh, they're just beautiful people. Um, just in closing, I, there's just there's so many. I just know, I love that. I love being in a room where we can just like address everyone as their creatives, um, which we should always be able to do that, to be quite honest with you. But this is obviously a sacred space where it's directed towards uh, all of you in your understanding that God's divinity is in you and yeah. you were created to create. Yes. That's what makes you different from every other species on the planet that you are like able to imagine something yes. and build it and see it come to pass. You can visualize it and yes. you can plant the seed and you can watch it grow. And um, I, I know for Don Cherie and I, and maybe you could even weigh into this a little bit, the greatest creation that we ever got to be a part of is the one where we get to truly collaborate with God yes. himself, wow. 
which is this beautiful sacred space known as marriage and sex. And the fact that all of a sudden as we come together, we're actually like, this is why we could do another teaching another time on sex, but like sex is sacred because you're literally collaborating yes. with the creator of the world and creating a soul. Part of it, yes. Wow. That and so um, I just know for me in, in my creativity, I, I get to pastor a church. I want to believe that after having kids, I've become a better pastor because of having children. And I think you're going to be a better artist and a better wife and a better man and a better woman after having children. I do. I, mean, I just, and that's, we went on a journey where we couldn't have kids. That's not a knock to people that don't have kids. That you're, I just say, it's just a beautiful gift that God gives us. And where I'm going with that is that I feel like when I look at my kids, I think about what I want for them. I want to deposit into my church the same things I'm trying to deposit into my children. Yes. I want to leave in my kids the same thing I want to leave on the earth. Yeah. And so I guess I was wondering, that's sort of a setup as you guys are, are pregnant tonight. I was, I, I wanted to close with, maybe you have some final advice to all the creatives in the room, but I sort of wanted you to do it through the filter that you have been in this collaborative process with God and indigo is wow. coming. And really what is your hope and what's your advice for your child? But I think that would hopefully be the same truth that you'd want to give to all of us in this space. Maybe what are your hopes? What are your thoughts? What's, what's the counsel you want to give to your child, but to all of us? Hmm. We, we have talked about a, a lot about how, how there's no bigger and deeper intimacy than the intimacy that you have when you're creating, no? Like, I mean, that's why vulnerability and like the pride outside and all that. And it's very much like sex. I mean, it's the same thing. The same energy that animates creativity is the same one that animates sex, right? And and there's there's tons of literature about it, you know, because I think it's super interesting. And and this is our our mod. Not your arm, but like the the. <laughs> this is the, I was like this. The uh, this is the 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 biggest and most purposeful thing we've created together ever, you know. And 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 for me, it happened that I started watching my creativity from another perspective when I started thinking it through my babies eyes and head and heart, you know, like I started really feeling that I am impacting this world and not only like out there, but like super close here, you know, and, and we have to talk a lot about your parenting skills because your, your, your kids are like the best thing in the world. And I just want my kids to like behave as yours, <laughs> you know, and, and, and yeah, I would say that, that, um, for for every like I wanted to say this the the for every couple that is like struggling with cercanía how do you say that closeness no yeah, yeah closeness with closeness or like um, intimacy or like you know connection there's no better shortcut than creativity let's create something together sex. what no I, I mean I mean, I mean no I mean <laughs> Closing okay. remarks, you know. I love that, but I mean, <laughs> you're never closer to anybody than when you're close to someone creating something together. Yeah. Songwriting. Let's paint something. Let's yeah. do some Let's pottery go. clay. How do you say that? Like pottery the class. yeah, it's pottery. Yeah, pottery. something like that. That's a beautiful shark. What do I have there? An eyelash. An eyelash. Yours? I don't know. That's how close we are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. It's true, and it's been really crazy for me. I don't know. If you felt like, of course, I feel like it's for you, it was like a whole, it had a whole different meaning, but your story helped me a lot. And it was, I think my, for me, so just to, to say a little bit, um, my, my whole life, for some reason, they had told me that I wasn't going to be able to have children. And, um, that was before I got married, before I met Kami, for some reason, <laughs> that was just something that people were declaring over my life. And I always had that like in the back of my head a little bit, but mine too. Uh, I had, you know, shared that with him because, you know, it's something that people had said to me. And I think it was 
in the moment that I was like okay with it, but also declaring that that's not what was going to happen in my life. Um, and just letting God do his thing. We didn't even like try and it was like right away. And, and it was kind of like, I kind of wanted to see all the doctors <laughs> in the eyes and be like, you see? Um, and I'm sure that when it happened to you and when you were living it, like each little kick or each movement is like, oh my, oh my gosh, there is a, there is literally a human inside of me and I am being part of the creative process of bringing a human being to this earth. That is so beautiful. And it's a huge responsibility, I feel too, like the things that I say, the things that I hear and all that, like I don't want it to be something that, you know, will influence my wow. baby. But what I, I don't know if it happened, but for me, it's so frustrating that he can't live that. <laughs> like he was a part of it, obviously, 50%. But it's like, it's me carrying it. It's, so it's huge, huge responsibility, but he's so done everything to like, be in this creative process because I feel like we're still creating, you know? It's not just the moment that it happened, but it's it's that constant so creation sacred. for this life to come out. That's so beautiful and so sacred because we 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 had together we had together a um a journal a, like a prayer journal of fertility, you know? A, like from like like two or three years ago. We started like praying and I would like had a like my journal and every like every day I would like I declare fertility in my in in La Panza de mi esposa, right? And I I remember that like I don't know why in a moment of my life I'm sorry, in a moment of my life I like I'm sorry. <laughs> like I was struggling with the word infertility, you know? And I don't know why. Because when you told me and your family told me, the doctors told you, you wouldn't be able to have kids. And before you, I never dreamed with having kids. Like I started dreaming that with you and because you were having that dream, right? And so in my life was like, because of someone that declared something negative in your life, told you something before, I was caring for so many days, like almost like three or four years with that. A bag of like, sh like, yeah, like that, you know, like something that wasn't true. And I was declaring fertility, not from love and light, but from the, the, the fear of darkness and like the idea that you were infertile, you know. And I'm like just thinking about not only in the creative process of closing the doors for people that doesn't have that connection with you you have to close your heart and your ears for people that is going to declare in your process and in your life stuff that is not true you know yeah i know that i know that your journey has encouraged so many people in this room and so many people watching and you and i have talked over the years for rich and i we went eight years asking god to give us a child and You're right. It is the most divine creative process. And as you carry indigo, you are collaborating with God. You're, you're in direct collaboration with God. And this child is blessed. And you have never created anything more beautiful than this child. And it is in direct collaboration with God. And I think that the way that you're already building your house with love and respect and encouragement there's already so much deposited in this child's soul. Like there, there's a legacy and a heritage. And I didn't even get to speak so many things about you. I don't, I know everybody in this room adores you, Eva. But I have to say that the way that you live your life, it's so inspiring and challenging to me. If you know anything about Eva, like she's a writer. She is an incredible singer and artist. She's an actress. And in the last few years, you've stepped into actually being the director yeah. for all of Camilo's 
music videos, you continue to stretch boundaries. And when I look at your life, I just look at a woman of faith who is strong and who looks around and goes, no, there, there are no barriers. Yeah. If there's a passion in my heart, I'm going to step out it and do it. And I really think that you haven't seen anything yet, Eva. Uh, a lot of people believe that once you have children, okay, that's your entire focus. And it is. But there's this anointing and this power and this strength because of what yeah. has come out of your womb that allows you to bring life to everything else that your hand touches. And I just want to let you know, like, whatever fears or words that people try to speak over what the next season of your life is, there's only greatness to come. There's only new beauty, new growth, new creation. And... We're behind you every step of the way. You encourage me and inspire me in my journey. And uh, I think as we're in this room and we're people of faith, I understand that people might have walked in this room. And when we say the name Jesus, you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. But what we believe about our relationship with God is that God divinely designed us to walk together. Yeah. Yeah. And so my relationship with Jesus is now strengthened by this thing that God created. We didn't create, and it's called the church. And maybe you have such a bad taste in your mouth because of your experience with church. And the truth is, is that church is not a building. It's people. Yeah. And so the reason why oftentimes it gets really messy is yeah. because we're all broken people. Yeah. Yeah. And we're all in the process of, of being changed and transformed by His love. And I think the beautiful thing about the church is that it's generational. Yeah. And that if you walk in this room and you thought you were just going to hear about music, but there's a need in your life or there's a word that a doctor has spoken over your life that you can be encouraged to know. doesn't matter what the doctors say. It matters what the divine designer says. And if he has a plan for you to bring life, it's going to happen. Are you guys with me? Can we, can we just thank Camilo and Eva Luna? Man, we love you. Amazing. We love you guys so much.